in this screencast video lecture we will try to understand about the photosynthesis process that that happens in the living organism it is one of the important and primarily carbon assimilation process that have been operating at the very base level of our food chain this can be carried out by the plant system or in the category of bacteria it can be carried out by the cyanobacteria as well as other group of bacteria such as purple sulfur bacteria and green sulfur bacteria here in this process involves conversion of light energy into chemical energy and the organism that is carrying out this process is referred as a photosynthetic organisms organism that is carrying out this photosynthesis is a are commonly referred as a phototrophs they could be of a two kinds which i have already narrated one is the purple and green sulfur bacteria that are commonly involved in the anoxygenic kind of photosynthesis process whereas the other one is a cyanobacteria algae and the green plants that are involved in the oxygenic way of photosynthesis here the difference between these two groups is existing there in the utilization of the reducing power whereas the other two process that is carbon fixation and energy generation are same to both the group of the organisms if you look at into the anoxygenic group of photosynthetic organism the electron is been available or obtained there from the reduced molecules such as hydrogen sulfide whereas if you look at there into the oxygenic group of photosynthetic organism the electrons are commonly obtained there by the photolysis of water that in turn results in the formation of oxygen that is the reason why it is referred as a oxygenic photosynthesis whereas in the other group oxygen is not produced there it's only a oxidized form of other inorganic compounds are formed so it is referred as a anoxygenic photosynthetic groups for both this process light is the only thing that is used as an energy but it has been effectively intercepted and converted into chemical energy with the help of chlorophyll molecules or bacterial chlorophyll molecules they found to contain certain protein complexes that are known as as a photochemical reaction centers which are intercepting the light and it is used for the production or generation of atp and nadph this atp and nadph are further used there in the carbon fixation process this could be very clearly explained in this diagram if you look at the first step involved production of atp as well as nadph and this step is commonly referred as a energy and reducing equivalent synthesizing phase which commonly happens through photophosphorylation process the phase following this energy as well as reducing equivalent synthesizing phase is the carbon reduction phase or carbon fixation phase you can look at here the nadph and atp that is formed in the photophosphorylation phase have been utilized here for fixing carbon dioxide into cell carbon now we look it in some detail about the first phase that is the energy and reducing equivalent synthesis phase it is operating there in the thylakoid membranes this thylakoid membrane will be present there in the plant system that is inside the chloroplast or else this thylakoid like membranes could be present there in the cyanobacteria in which it can be taking place here it is analogous to that of the oxidative phosphorylation that is the electron transport will be operating here and finally the atp has been synthesized here and this particular process will be commonly taking place only in the presence of light that is the reason why the reaction involved here are all collectively referred as a light dependent reaction what is the important reaction that will be taking place here from the sun's light is intercepted by certain special photosystems here photosystem 2 as well as photosystem 1 they are involved in gathering the sunlight that helps in the splitting of the water molecule that is photolysis of water as a result oxygen have been evolved there so this particular process of photophosphorylation is referred as a oxygenic photosynthesis process as oxygen have been evolved there and it is commonly referred as a non cyclic photophosphorylation the reason is the electron that have been donated there in the photolysis process of water will not be again returning back into the system this kind of non cyclic photophosphorylation is usually happening there in the plant system and also in the cyanobacteria 
whereas another kind of a photosynthesis that is anoxygenic photosynthesis usually involves the cyclic photophosphorylation process which would be commonly happening there in the organisms such as a purple sulfur bacteria as well as green sulfur bacteria are classical examples of this cyclic photophosphorylation process. Here in this phosphorylation it involves the pigment of bacterial chlorophyll instead of chlorophyll that have been involved there in the oxygenic photosynthesis. Here again the reaction centers of the bacterial chlorophyll will get excited through sunlight and the electron will be moving there in a cyclic process and finally it reaches back to the bacterial chlorophyll molecule itself that is to its reaction center itself. But during this particular movement a cyclic flow of this electron results in the generation of a proton motive force that could be successfully harnessed for ATP synthesis. So far we have seen the points related to the photophosphorylation which could be of a non-cyclic that is in the oxygenic photosynthetic organisms of cyanobacteria and plant system and which could be of a cyclic when it is an anoxygenic photosynthesis process that operates in the green sulfur bacteria as well as purple sulfur bacteria. So, whatever the process finally it gets a lot of energy as well as reducing equivalent that will be channeled into the next process that is for the carbon fixation process which usually involve the Kelvin Benson cycle that is there in the cyanobacteria as well as in the plant system. Whereas other cycles such as a hydroxypropionate pathway or acetyl CoA pathway could be involved there in the anoxygenic photosynthetic organism. Usually the reactions of this carbon cycles are light independent reactions that is light energy is not necessarily required for the reactions. The total cycle can be divided into three steps. One involves carbon fixation and the next one involves reduction and production of other sugars or manufacturing of other sugars and the third step involved the regeneration of ribulose bisphosphate which is an essential molecule for the carbon fixation process to get continued. In a nutshell if you look at the light independent reaction or carbon fixation reaction six molecules of carbon dioxide will be converted into one molecule of carbohydrate that is glucose molecule. These glucose molecules further help in building the other molecules of the cell. One molecule of carbon dioxide combines there with its acceptor organic molecule that is ribulose bisphosphate. This helps in the forming of three phosphoglycerate molecule. In the next step, phosphoglycerate form is reduced into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. This involves a lot of ATP as well as NADPH that is reducing E. coli that have been previously synthesized by a cyclic or non-cyclic photophosphorylation process. So, finally about one-sixth of the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is used to make the sugars that is to make glucose and other sugars such as amylose or cellulose there in the plant system whereas the five-sixths of the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate molecule are further processed by complex reactions in order to produce the ribulose monophosphate. Again with the help of a ATP requirements the ribulose monophosphate is converted into ribulose bisphosphate which is the actual molecule which accepts the carbon dioxide and involved in the continuation of the carbon cycling process.